Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hello. Is anyone listening? Yes, I've got Adrian in Seattle. Whoa. A- another armchair referred by your patron saint, Monica Padman. I've been filling the void in my ears with your lovely voices and nearly pissing myself laughing along with you. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? Thank you for making the quirks of marriage and family so relatable and less isolating. I love that. I love that review. I don't love how you said pissing. Pissing. <laughs> Ew. Gross. Can I do it one more time? No. Okay. God, please. The, I have, I'm have. i having the same visceral, uh, thank you for that review, new arm cherry slash nobody. Um, the other night, and this has happened, I'd say, a handful of times in our almost 15 years of marriage, I'm soundly sleeping. Mm-hmm. With my, the way my mom used to sleep with like my arm crooked up with my forearm kind of over my eyes. Okay. So you don't have to see anything. It's like you're a homemade face mask. Yes. Over your eyes or just above the eyes? Over them. Nice. Soundly deep in REM. And you reach over and in the most grotesque manner <laughs> you take your fingers like <laughs> there is like a rag doll hand with your fingers all facing down and you tickled my armpit in such a disgusting way and you woke me up and when i say it ruined my night <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i know you're doing it in your sleep like i don't remember this at all <laughs> you're not doing it intentionally but this is it's it's happened enough times that it's not just like a, like a, you moved your arm in a way and your weird limp fingers just happened to dance across my armpit. Uh. This is something that in your sleep, you're seeing my armpit and you're sleepwalking, making the choice to do this. And when I tell you <laughs> the rage, and you know, when I sleep, I get, I get, I'm very. I'm a very sensitive sleeper. Mm. I awaken very easily. I need there to be specific circumstances. It does really bother me sometimes when you have your phone light on in the night, and because that's really fucks with my circadian rhythms in a way that <laughs> it doesn't yours. I think, <laughs> or you choose to ignore. But this, oh my god, just makes me so mad. What's weird is you shouldn't be that mad because. That same night, I had a dream, and there was an opportunity to cheat on you. And guess what? (laughs) I didn't take it. What? Yeah. That almost never happens in a dream. Uh, I don't know about that. Um. I think I'm pretty faithful in my dreams. (laughs) I may have strayed. My eyes, I may have been turned. Who was it with? Paige from uh, Love Island. Love Island. (laughs) Yeah. There was a BJ on the table, and I denied it. Wow. Yes. And in your dream, were you like, my wife wouldn't like this? Yeah, I mean, was I along, part of the picture? Something along that line. Yeah, yeah. You were the reason I didn't do it. Yes. If you're, <laughs> if there's any doubt in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Were you at the villa? No, it didn't seem like I was at the villa. We're oh. talking about love. Oh, wait, I said from Love Island. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about. It's a reality television show that has swept the nation. Or the world, really. It's based, we only have watched the UK version. Now, my friend Michelle started the US version. Mistake, right? Well, no. Really? So, this is really interesting because it's kind of akin to watching the US version of like The Office versus the UK version. No, 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 no. Um, Like baking shows or competition shows. Where there's kind of like an American cutthroat thing that when you then watch the British, Great British Bake Off or whatever, they're just like all pals. There's no sense of competition. Yeah. They're really supportive. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of like this breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. But the whole premise of Love Island is it's all of these 
hot, young, single people in this beautiful villa in Spain, even though it's they're all UK people, mm. like pairing up. And I guess it, the premise is that they're all there to find love. Yeah. And also it puts them in situations where there's just kind of some baked in drama. Like you always have to be coupled up. If you're not, you're in danger of having to leave the island. You have to share a bed yeah. with whoever you're coupled up with. I mean, they don't force you to. There are other options, but in general. So, like, the minute that you're coupled up with someone, suddenly you're sharing a bed with them. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone's hooking up all the time. Although the people who are kind of in real relationships do start hooking up, and that's very fun. But the Michelle said that there's so much drama in the U.S. version that it kind of is scratching the edge of some of the drama that maybe you were missing from... The UK version. And I also feel like this last season of the UK version was very light on the drama compared to other seasons. That's what she was saying. This season left you wanting a little bit more. Having said that, we finished the season last night. No spoiler alerts, but we were delighted with who won. I felt very satisfied. Yeah. But going back to your cheating dreams. Yeah. How often would you say you're having a cheating dream? A cheating dream? Um, not very often. I mean, to be completely honest, I don't. I'm not remembering my dreams very often. Yeah, so, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's that going on. But, but I do wake up. I do wake up with a cheating dream every once in a like. I probably have one a year, mm -hmm. and I feel wracked with guilt, even if I didn't do it, which I feel like I usually do, though. But usually, this you is usually cheat. Well, usually what the situation is in my dreams is that I hook up with them sometimes, or like sometimes not, but my intention is to. Yeah. And then after the fact, I remember that I'm married. Oh, God. <laughs> Just to be clear, if we, I mean, I feel like we do have some new listeners here. Yeah. Typically, Elizabeth's <laughs> fantasies involve a grotesque older man of power. <laughs> so I don't feel that threatened. Uh, but it is kind of gross that she would cheat with these men well, uh, over me. Yeah. Um, does the fact of like who's starring in my weird fantasies, and I also want to establish for any new nobodies, I don't find these men actually even remotely attractive in real life. There's something, I, it's always kind of a surprise. Like, oh, you? And it's not even old, always older men. Sometimes it's younger men who, you remember there was that um barista or server yes yes, yes. anyway but the blonde barista that worked <laughs> at la mill in silver lake california jesus christ you don't need what to what a hunk <laughs> but i really disliked him a lot i thought he was very rude and that just turns you on sexually you're not attracted <laughs> yes. to them it just turns there's you a big on difference sexually. so are you repulsed by me no but do i turn you on yes mm, do i <laughs> Yes, okay. obviously. I'm 15 years in. We've had two children. That's not the best, uh, like, two out of 15 years. Oh, my God. See what I'm saying? No? <laughs> That's just not the best argument. Well, okay, whatever. But if, you, if we were like the Duggars and you're like, well, obviously, we've had 19 children. We've been together for 15 years. I'm like, oh, you're turned on to me. You, got, you I've can't submitted, keep your hands I've, off me. I've submitted to you the way our Lord intended. Now we're talking. Um, so, listen. But does it give you a, a weird sense of security and that what I'm trying to say is like for you, which I don't really have many trust issues with you in this department, mm -hmm. but like, you know, you're having this dream about Paige. I'm like, if you're out, I mean, I can't even imagine a version of our lives where this is true, but like mm -hmm. you're at a club or something yeah, and club. you're drunk and there's a hot girl. Yeah. And I like see pictures posted from one of your friends you're out with, like you guys with a bunch of hot girls and there's some girl like leaning on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would feel threatened by that because okay. you find hot girls sexually attractive. Okay. <laughs> Is there a comfort to you that if the roles were reversed and I'm out at the club with my ladies, again, this those days are behind me, but let's say, mm -hmm. and there's some like hot, young guy that I seem to like 
next to me, you're probably not feeling that threatened by it. Yeah, I'd be much more nervous if there was like a guy like 57, <laughs> a little sweaty that I knew had been like saying really offensive patriarchal things to you. Um, mm -hmm. and like, but it was very powerful and successful. Yeah, but very powerful and successful. Then I'd be kind of shaking in my boots. Yeah. Okay. Glad we cleared that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, the tickling. I'm curious if any of our nobodies have ever experienced anything like that. Because you know what I wonder. It what? is grounds for, uh, like, first of all, I'm impressed that my knee jerk reaction wasn't to physically hurt you and. Jeez. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm saying I don't condone this physical violence, but I do have this thing when I'm asleep. Yeah. Where kind of the gloves are off. Like, I get very aggressive. Like, if you pull all the sheets, I will aggressively yank them back. Like, kind of my filter for fighting is <laughs> goes out the window when mm -hmm. I'm asleep. And as we know, for, for many years, I had night terrors. Very true. Where I actually did physically hurt you no 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 no. i never hurt you no 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 you'd be like screaming at somebody that wasn't there but i never thought you were the somebody and went out maybe that was just my fear that i did that uh yeah i don't think i think maybe one or two times m more well, likely you I, the night terror? I interpreted it that like well in the beginning of this when you would have night terrors you would like wake up screaming and I would be like trying to figure out what was going wrong and calm you down and touching you. And you're not really supposed to do that. And then you could wake up in the middle with uh, me, you know, kind of like trying to calm you down or hold you down. Because if you've been like, you know, flailing or something. Mm -hmm. And I think in that moment, um, you would uh, I would be worried that you thought I was like the bad attacking person. me. Yeah, yeah. But it would then turn out then you would snap out of it. After I'd already thought you were awake and you would have no clue what was going on. I I do remember snapping out of it, like and being like, Why am I standing up or sure, yeah. whatever and so confused. But was what was always strange to me is that you would say that I'm like screaming bloody murder. Yeah. And have a look of terror in my eyes or I'm saying something that implies that there's someone bad there or something. But then when I would snap out of it, you would be all like adrenaline pumping. Oh, scared. yeah. My I would have like my roof. heart wouldn't be racing. I would just be calm and being like, what is going on? And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was more <laughs> traumatizing for me for sure than for you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um. I think with the tickle thing, that is weird that I tickled you. Do you think there's a chance that I do like to touch you in the middle of the night? And I really love to put my hand in between your like short sleeve and your shoulder. Like I put my hand there a lot. Uh huh. Maybe I was just trying to do that uh, while I was well, asleep. The way, the way you're getting there is very upsetting. Yeah, I guess the tickle <laughs> thing doesn't. It, I guess that doesn't make sense because when I do that, I'm just sliding my hand under your shirt sleeve on I kind your shoulder. Of, yeah, I feel like you're you're like you're kind of waking up and you're like do 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 target bullseye. Like it's it's so clear. It's almost like there's this yeah, this target that you're hitting. Yeah. In a, in the most upsetting way cuz you know I hate light touch. Yeah, you don't like light touch. It really upsets me in general, but also being awakened with tickle light touch <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a new kind of hell for me um so i don't really know what to do about it but what if i'd been videoing you this whole time <laughs> and this was a youtube channel you didn't know about well fuck because i've been listening to this podcast something was wrong mm. shout out christina moses and allison miller who told me about it i'm kind of obsessed with it um, and I, it's all about people who get in deep into relationships with people and then something like that, but even more egregious than that, like they discover something about what's happening around the relationship or who this person really is Yeah, that completely is not, an, you know, the person's just been lying 
the entire time. Yeah. And it reminds me, I watched this documentary recently called ba- Bad Vegan. Hmm. And actually, I knew someone in it. It was from, it's all about this, like, very famous vegan restaurant in New York. It was a raw vegan restaurant. Um, and I remember the restaurant because one of the guys I performed with at UCB, Nick Ross, okay. worked there. Ah. And um, I remember because it was kind of making a splash and like celebrities were sure. all about it. And I always thought it was very like very cool that he worked there. So he was in this documentary. A bit of a turn on, if you will. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Uh, Nick, uh, yes, I thought it was very cool. Okay. I won't lie. Sure. So anyway, this woman, the whole documentary, I'm going about to spoil the whole thing. But basically, this woman got into this relationship with this compulsive liar who, and I, I, this is something I'm like, I, we need to teach our kids. If at any time you're with someone who claims to have lots of money, mm-hmm. but like can't access it for whatever yeah, reason, yeah, yeah. and they need you just to float them 40 grand, which seems like nothing when they have, <laughs> when they have $50 million sitting in the yeah. bank and they have receipts to show you, yeah. don't give them the no. 40 grand and, or don't, you know, don't float people money in general. Yeah. Unless you're willing to say goodbye to that money forever. Yeah. So um, this woman gets in this relationship and what's so weird about it is he's, she's not even like attracted to him. It's so strange, but he has this mental hold on her mm. and she's a smart, successful businesswoman in New York, like killing it. Yeah. And basically over the course of like two years, he sucks her and her family dry to the tune of six million dollars. I haven't seen the documentary, and I and I, I'm sorry to this woman and the family, but shame on no, you, no, no. six million dollars. No, I actually. So the documentary is very artfully done because you're on this journey, and you're also hearing it. I mean, the people who are the true victims are her employees. They start getting stiffed while she's like in Europe showing these lavish vac- vacations and there's something about um when you are in a there's something to this documentary that really highlights something that i haven't seen a lot before which is like when you are the victim of abuse sometimes you start to take on the characteristics of your abuser and i think we see that with kids you know we sometimes tell our kids like hurt people hurt people which kids who are abused tend to you know have bigger obstacles to overcome and in not using those same tactics to okay. try to grasp at power or control or whatever. Um, so in this case, she became an abuser too, but she would never own up to it. It gets to the point where they are serving jail time. The family, the family, no, that got the swindled? woman and the, the husband that got duped. The woman who got duped and the husband who she duped married her. the guy, yeah. Oh. Then they get out of prison, and like she's talking to this documentary crew as though she's on the other side of it. Like, ugh, I hate him. Yeah, he's horrible. As though she sees things about it now. Like she has clarity. Yeah, on everything that went wrong. But still, all the while, like not really taking responsibility for what she put her staff through. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. she put. Like her, she fucked over so many investors. And then at the very end, I'm spoiling this whole fucking thing. It's still worth watching. Um, you hear a phone call between her and him. They're still together. They're not still together, but she's still buying into his shit. Oh, and I'm just like, all right, you know what? You made your bed. Like, go give him, go. I don't know how you could ruin your life further, but go for it. Like, you think this guy, because he he also convinced her he had, like, this, like, metaphysical abilities. He had a link to, like, a spiritual realm that she didn't have access to. Like, it got so fucked up and deep. Anyway, all for money. Hmm. People go to great lengths to get money. But anyway, this podcast I was listening to 
like you saying, what if I had a YouTube channel? Because you listen to these podcasts, and I've been there before. I was groomed, you know, by that voiceover coach. Like, and you look back on it, and you're like, "How did I not see that coming?" Yeah, or yeah. like the writing on the wall, or why did I fall for that? Or like, that seems absolutely absurd. So I understand where my my <laughs> the red flags along the way would be me just tickling your armpit like once a week <laughs> for years, and you'd be like, "How did I not see this?" What coming? would you call that YouTube channel? Um. Oh gosh. I don't know. Tickle, tickle. Oh, boy. <laughs> that is, like, my <laughs> my level of upset <laughs> and, like, questioning if I would stay with you or, like, divorce you well, okay, would, wait. like, truly catch hang me. on. No, like, no. if it were tickle, tickle, I'm out. Okay, catch but me. If <laughs> you find out, catch me right now. Okay. And let me see if I can weasel my way out of it. Okay. So... So this is what happened. Okay. I, how many this years is role I, play. How many years have I been doing this? Let's say like, wow, gosh, this really, if you want to weasel your way out of it. Five years. Okay. So for five <laughs> years, I've been videoing without your knowledge in bed. Are you telling me right now? No, no, no. I'm just setting the stage. Okay. So we're like <laughs> setting the parameters. Okay. So for five years, I've been videotaping Can I play me, act how I found it? Me. Oh, for sure. Okay. But- Okay. For five years, I've been videoing without you knowing while you're sleeping. And the video that I like to make is a very simple video. It's just me tickling <laughs> the your armpit in the middle of the night while you're sleeping yeah. and getting your reaction. And I'm posting those reaction videos on my YouTube channel called Tickle Tickle. <laughs> and you find out. How did you find out? Andy... What's this weird, like, I I thought we talked about, you know, if you're ever going to watch porn, you, you're you very careful to, to scrub it from whatever device you're using, because obviously it could scar our children forever. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I opened I you. your iPad. Yeah. And it's on some freaky YouTube video. Yeah. Here, let me show you. Look. Oh, what? oh shit. <laughs> Uh, what? Is, wait, Andy, you, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that me? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Wait, what? Yeah. The fuck? Um, you. I should have told you about this. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I just. Can think, you stop laughing right now? No, it's so funny to me though. Like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. I should have told you this. I just get the biggest kick out of how you react. You know, like when I tickle you in the middle of the night sometimes? What? <laughs> you know when I tickle your armpit? Yes, I absolutely fucking hate it. It's so funny how this you overreact. This is this whole channel? <laughs> yeah. It's called Tickle Tickle? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Me and my subs hang on. think Andy? it's so funny. It's... Andy? Yeah. <laughs> this is not funny. I'm, so, I'm, I'm really sorry. I should have told you about this. You should have... No, you shouldn't have told, uh, you should not have done this ever. You don't, it's not like, oh, my bad, I didn't tell you I was secretly filming you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. But look at the subs, look at the number of subs. <laughs> What's a sub? How many subscribers to the channel? Oh, how many are there? 1.2. And they, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at some of the comments before I should have told you about Do this. Do some people think that I'm in on it? There must I, be some suspicion. No, I I don't think anyone thinks you're in on it. How much are you making on this? <laughs> well, they all get demonetized. So we're not making anything, actually. But I have a lot of subscribers, 1.2 million. But we don't make any money. Is that true for YouTubers? What do you mean? What does that mean, demonetized? Like, uh, if the content... If it's something that advertisers, okay, one. <laughs> okay, real quick sidebar demonetization. <laughs> Say you make a YouTube video and you use like copyrighted song and material. Yes. Now advertisers can't advertise on that anymore. It gets demonetized. Say you have content that has foul language in it. Uh, advertisers can't advertise on it. It gets demonetized. 
uh, say it's like inappropriate, but not so inappropriate that it can be on like YouTube. Tickle tickle level inappropriate. Yeah. So I'm thinking tickle tickle. No advertisers are going to jump on it, and or it just got demonetized. Got it. Okay. So for a split second, yes, you do think that like, oh wait, but is he making like millions of dollars? And then I'm like, no, actually not. I'm just like, I, I'll do it for the fans at this point. <laughs> well, let me ask you this though about this because yeah. I only am waking up to this tickle situation at most twice a year because you've had to hold back doing it so you're only posting occasionally in the world that i had imagined i'm doing this once a week whoa but that's actually you bring up a good point it's not possible because you'd call me on it once or twice and a also year people would start to i think part of the appeal is that i am being victimized and this is happening without my knowledge gross Okay, we've twisted in a circle that I can't quite find my way out of. Okay, what were we doing? Let's get out of this. <laughs> oh, you're trying to talk yourself out of it. Okay, weirdly, I see how you could. You do? feel right it doesn't say a lot about you it doesn't say a lot about me it doesn't say a lot about us well listen yeah we've built a life we have two kids <laughs> you start weighing things you know you start weighing things i remember someone close to me mm -hmm. i don't want to share too many details but having gone out with friends and would tell us about like this is years and years ago how all of the friends are like cheating on their oh, partners sure. yeah, and yeah, hooking yeah. up and kind of had this like, what? Can I pause you for one second? Just that idea of you out with your girlfriends and being like, listen, he didn't, it's not like he cheated on me or anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just he's making these videos and your girlfriend's being like, uh huh. <laughs> I mean, what, what I will say I could never get past is if that, what else? Yeah, sure. But <laughs> that's that's a tip of the iceberg situation a, for sure. For sure. For you sure. look under this the seawater and you see the whole mountain beneath it. Mm. Um but I remember this person being like, Yeah, but when you're married like a long enough time, cheating doesn't have the same like we were newlyweds, I think, or mm -hmm. newish, and it was like, you guys don't even know. Like once you're married for a certain amount of time, like cheating isn't the big deal breaker it's made out to be and then cut so. to now literally all of those people are divorced oh that's funny but, or not, sorry that's not funny that's but, hilarious <laughs> but <laughs> but what i will say is um you know i in listening to this podcast mm -hmm. where it's i'm now on season nine so it's like nine different stories of yep. people being like and it's like all of these little nuanced steps of the way the stories are told in a way where you're like, okay, I guess I could see how she could buy that or that or that. <coughs> um, it's not always she. There are also stories the other way. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I lived with a compulsive liar. Yes. And... I always kind of paint that relationship out as like, but he was nice. Like, I think he just had issues and yeah. like, I wish him well. But now I'm like, is he nice? Like, I don't know, to be able to lie and what, like, we weave a web of lies that goes so deep. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I will say, you know, I was vulnerable. I had just lost my parents. I thought I had a lot of money. Turns out, like, the amount that I had, you know, now I look back on it, I'm like, I was so foolish with it because I thought it was this huge amount, and uh, it sure went quick, <laughs> you know. And I wasn't living, like, in a super extravagant lifestyle, but 
I was like not to the degree of this bad vegan woman who went six million in, but like we went on a trip to Fiji that I paid for. Right, right. I paid for he didn't pay me in rent. I was paying for like a lot of stuff. And I don't I don't think he was intentionally like setting out to steal from me or anything or like but sure was convenient there yeah i have two people in my life that i can think of that were very big 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 liars Mm. and a lot of it revolved around (laughs) money stuff and being full of shit about the money stuff right what's an example of one of the lies he would tell back then that was related to money oh just like working somewhere that he didn't work that's a huge red flag yeah Obviously. Like, like, oh, and like, oh, okay, well, we could pick you up at work. No, 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 you don't have to pick me up at work. It's like, you don't fucking work there. What type of place would it be? Some An impressive, like... No, we're talking like we're like kids. It's like, you know, you're working So at... what's the point of the lie? That's the thing, is I don't even know if those people understand what the point of the lie is. The lies that the guy I dated told, I think in many ways were always too like self aggrandize Mm -hmm. some of them are so absurd and ridiculous but they would be so they are so absurd that you'd be like but then why like why would he make that up and why would he think that you wouldn't know they were a lie that's what's interesting about these people is yeah and if you try to point out a lie that they did they fucking flip it on you so fast yes and that's the the gaslighting like you um, and and that happened to me. This is where I'm like, I think he's not a good guy, actually. Mm. Listening to this podcast, and I know he went on to have, like, last I heard, he was, he had, like, started, this was, like, a decade ago or whatever, yeah. 15 years, whatever. He had started a relationship with someone he had met online, and it seemed like she was kind of, like, vulnerable, like he was going to, I think he became a stepdad, and... Um, <clears throat> moved across the country and but like he told me and it was really interesting because I was pursuing acting at the time which was a tough uphill challenge for me because I (laughs) was just not castable at the time really I mean like also my view of what acting meant was so diluted I thought I had to be this like hot young 20 year old instead of being who I was which was like a depressed 20 year old and a 40 year old woman's body and like looks wise. And I don't know. I sometimes question if I had a different view of what acting was, I I could have gotten further, but maybe, but I also think especially even in the last 20 years, I think it was probably still harder 20 years ago. Yeah. Things have changed a lot. And you know what? I did have, what I did do acting wise was, had my one woman show at UCB. Like I had success. It just wasn't the type of success I was setting out for, which is, isn't that always the truth? Um, but at this time I was living in LA pursuing acting. I met him. He was an actor and musician. This is kind of interesting because it kind of goes back to you, Andy, Mm. which is you were a musician. Yeah. You were my first major crush. Yeah. I always like, had crushes on musicians or like artists and I kind of wonder if some of that was from having such a big crush on you Mm. and um but his music was like terrible and he we'll put a link in (laughs) he um god bless like my sister who saw saw this relationship happening and was just like what the fuck and I'd bring over his cd and be like he put out a new blah, blah, blah. And she, like, then I'd come back weeks later. It was still in its, like, cellophane in the same place. And I'd be so hurt. But I'm like, my poor sister was like, what the fuck is she doing? But whatever. I was just desperate for, like, a family at that time. I had him move in very, very quickly with me. Um, and he never... He was always a nice person. That's the thing. He never... in. But he painted himself out to be this, like, really successful actor. He had this manager who was, like, 
super low rent now looking back on it who I was desperate to get her approval. I would desperately mm. Yeah. I once drove her to Palm Springs for like a surgery and the whole way there I was like trying to sell myself. I, it just makes me cringe yeah, how yeah. desperate I was. <clears throat> but he claimed <laughs> that when Mission Impossible 1 or 2 or whatever was coming out Probably Ar the first one. Armani yeah. The designer. This is how fucking crazy it was. Was doing a search all over the country for the next Tom Cruise. Yeah. Now, this guy did kind of look like Tom Cruise. He had a Tom Cruise look to him to the degree that people would tell us, do you know who you look like? Oh. So yeah, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Okay. Who, by the way, I don't find attractive is also what's funny. Okay. Take it easy here. <clears throat> okay. So... He's a national treasure. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. It was problematic. And but... you did date this guy. The non-Tom Cruise. Yes. Just be gentle. That's all I'm saying. But this is what I'm saying is I'm feeling like I don't need to be that gentle about this guy anymore. Okay. Let's hear it. <laughs> 20 years later. <laughs> he said that Armani had done the sweep of the nation looking for the next Tom Cruise. Found this guy... In a tiny town in Texas. Okay. Eureka, he's got him. Yeah. What a talent. Brought him out for the Mission Impossible premiere, dressed him. This was to the degree that this guy, like, um, Limp Biscuit would come on the radio. Yes. And he would be like, these guys are so cool. I'd be oh, like, yeah, because they'd done do the you... soundtrack for Mission Impossible. They had done the soundtrack. That's right. I'd be like, how do you know them? Oh, I met them at the premiere, and then we stayed in touch, and blah, blah, blah. And like, um, So then he came out to L.A., and through that experience, like, got his agent, who was just also total low-rent, yeah. like, commercial agent. But I was just yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God, he has an agent. Um, he booked one commercial, and that was, like, his claim to fame. And... That was all he had, but to me, and also the way he presented it to me was like, I have something that you want, and but you'll probably never get. Like, I was made out to be the struggling, like, kind of pathetic, was never going to get anywhere with acting. Like, I really think this had an effect on my self-confidence. And so then... He told me there was this big billboard on Sunset Boulevard that said the next Tom Cruise with okay. with his, I almost said his name, with his image on it. Yeah. <clears throat> One time when we were flying, or no, he, no, we weren't flying. This is how fucked up his lies were. He, I think he was telling my friend or someone about this and then said, yeah, like actually this on a flight, the steward, this stewardess was like, do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> and he was like, no, but I had a billboard up on Hollywood Boulevard. And I was like, I thought it was Sunset. Oh. And he was like, it was both. I told you there were, I, it was both. Oh, yeah. Then he told, my, he told my sister he had a callback to producer level for That's So Raven. Now, Sick. to get to producer level, that takes like three different callbacks at this point in time. And that would have been huge for him. <laughs> huge. And I was like, no, you didn't. Yeah. And he was like, yes, I did. It was last week. And I was like, I think I would know if you had that. And this was away from my sister. I like waited because yeah, I didn't yeah. want to embarrass him. Yeah. And then he's like, this is, you've been so like preoccupied with your own stuff. I haven't even told you what's going on yeah. with me. And like, you're jealous of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I found him. I lived with him for like almost two years. I found his wedding album. And that was when I kind of was like, okay, I didn't know he had been married. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found his album. It's so funny. The whole with you're him. More, you're more upset about the billboard, sort of. And then you find the wedding album. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but the, by the time the wedding album came, I also. You know, I met him when I was so depressed, and I look back on my time in that relationship. I felt like I was sepia toned. Like, I think I'm pretty funny. He never, he just wasn't funny, but he was this like star in the making. And next I, Tom yeah. at next Tom Cruise, and I feel like 
what I have to offer was just so lost in the relationship that I kind of faded out of myself. Mm. And then the, my saving grace, honestly, was finding that goddamn album and being like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's almost like, were you, you probably not, you probably weren't relieved at the time, but looking back, that album was one of the best things you ever found. Absolutely. And then I was like, I talked to my sister and she was, God bless her, because I was so again I was so upset with her for not like loving him and I wanted to get married and have kids like I was 21 you know mm, yeah yeah and she always she never outright was like what the fuck are you doing she always was like well yeah, yeah, yeah. blah 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 and then finally after the album I think she was like Elizabeth please get out and that's when I went to Europe Mm -hmm. And then I came back and then decided to move to New York. All of these steps were like the best things I could have done. Um, but anyway, I look, it's interesting because I've just always painted this picture of him as being kind of like this nice, well-meaning guy who for some lied because he needed the ego boost. But now hearing these podcasts, I'm like, what has he done? But yeah, because I feel the, like it is a tip of the iceberg. That may be the case. I think. I think there's a few different flavors of it. I think there's the there is the flavor that is on more the harmless side and it's almost on the sad side. Yeah. And these people actually I don't think I genuinely don't think they can control the lying. It's almost like I don't know if it's like some sort of survival mechanism. And I think in many cases they don't even know they're lying. Right. Yes. Like because I think that has to almost be true for them to keep functioning that way it's almost like you have to believe it or otherwise you're so delusional and is almost. it like his he has such low self-esteem that i think that's one scenario potentially but then there's also like the sociopath uh one where people have an agenda and a mission and at all costs are serving themselves yes in which, like evil ways yeah right? which i don't think this guy was but i do think he was mildly I don't want to say he was like emotionally abusive but I do think like him lying to boost himself up and the way he presented things definitely made me feel lesser than or unworthy and actually it was him and like and his manager and it was it was really weird I feel like I was a little bit preyed upon by mm. all of these people and yeah. kind of used and oh our time is up this was this had to be a short one because we're Well, oddly enough, this one has to be a short one. Should we do a little teaser for down the road? Yes. This has to be a short one because we uh are working on an episode that'll be a slightly different format um about a big fucking liar in our lives. Yes. Um that What a perfect tea up. Yeah, this, this is wasn't actually even uh, intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know if that episode's gonna drop next week or two weeks or three weeks from now because we're putting a little extra care into it because there's a story that we've wanted to tell yeah. for a long time um, about something that happened to Totally Married, the podcast. Yes. Um, and one of the reasons we stopped doing the podcast. Yes. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Also, we didn't get to talk about my new jacket. Stay tuned for that. Oh, man. <laughs> a lot of good stuff to come. Wow. Okay. Uh but anyway, have I hope all of our nobodies have a wonderful week. Please find us on Patreon at Totally Lame. Find us on Instagram for more videos at, uh, nope, yep, at Nobody's Listening Right. Mm -hmm. And thank you for listening. And please tell your friends to listen to us. And we love the iTunes reviews. Yeah. Also, we love you, Monica Padman. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Shh.